beautiful co-creators of the new paradigm. I'm Wietzeke Kolhoff of Design for Awareness and today I am speaking to you from the, the beautiful fairy tale landscape of England. Uh, in fact, I'm actually sitting on the hill that is um, really, really considered to be the heart of the, the vortex area that we are in right now and that Glastonbury is a part of and that's where I'm staying at this point. Um, so this is my third time in my life, that in this life I should say, <laughs> that I'm visiting uh, Glastonbury and it's always been a very nourishing and beautiful experience for me. So um, the reason I'm making this video is because um, this whole idea of vortices and chakra points of the earth is becoming more and more um, returning to our awareness as human beings. Um, I feel that as we are connecting more with our inner core, with our uh, higher self, you could say, with our own core truth, um, becoming more of who we really are and remembering more of who and what we really are, we also um, instantly synchronize more and more with our planet. I feel that that is a natural side effect of following your excitement, following your joy. And as we do, um, for me personally at least, I noticed that I felt, um, for reasons that I cannot rationally explain, but uh, more and more attracted to certain um, vortex areas on this earth. So, starting 2012, I really um, began making little lists of places that um, I felt would be fun to visit. Not with any kind of very... Um, not at all actually <laughs> very well thought through plan behind it or reason why just merely because uh, for instance I saw a picture of Stonehenge and when I was 16 and I was really not raised to be very much aware of all of these etheric and energetic things uh, in my family um, at least I didn't get it from my parents in that sense to be aware of these things but when I was 16, for instance, I saw uh, a picture of Stonehenge in a history book and it was uh, described uh, very much from the point of view of the archaeologists <laughs> and uh, what they have uh, scientifically uh, found uh, to be true about that area. <laughs> and without having any other or further additional information on that spot back then, I felt fascinated by somehow the image of it. I was completely um, mesmerized by it and I couldn't explain why. But anyway, I followed my impulse, I, I took the picture out of the book and I put it on the wall. So for a few years uh, this, this image was traveling with me without me necessarily understanding why I felt cold to it or anything. And then 2012 is when I began to actually uh, make a bucket list and write down all of these places, all of these intuitive hints and intuitive knowings that I've had throughout my life of places that I felt spontaneously uh, it would be really cool to visit them. And Stonehenge was one of them. I wrote it down. I'm like, wow, I remember this moment when I was 16 and it's always fascinated me and I still don't know why. I understood more about it now, at least as in it being a vortex, now I understood that, but still I had no specific expectations when I went. Um, and when I actually got there, I received a pretty impressive uh, download on the spot. I didn't even know that um, things like this could happen. It was, it was also very physical and emotional for me personally. So, um, but it was exactly what I needed. So. The idea of visiting vortices and what kind of effect it may have on us, I feel personally, is very much depending on what reason you have, what reason you have personally to go there, to go see it. Um, so, again, I think if it is uh, spontaneity, enthusiasm, curiosity, if it's a uh, impulse from the heart you just go there or circumstances lead you there that's another one that happens a lot more and more you will find you get the most out of it and especially if you don't have any particular expectations because expectations close the door for the amount of experiences the amount of ways 
wherein um, any message, whatever that may be for you, may come to you, can be allowed in by you. So that's my personal experience. I have been to sacred spots as well in my life where I did assume <laughs> that it might be impactful for me and I didn't necessarily feel all that much. So you see, there is no way you can pinpoint it and I continue to learn that you cannot um, rationalize it or, um, or mentalize any of these journeys. It's all a journey. We're all discovering all the time. And I'm continuously aware that the picture is this big and all we have is this or even less perhaps of the puzzle that we, that we think we know. <laughs> and that's what's making it so fun as well. I mean, I really enjoy this um, exploration, which it really is. So what are vortices? These points on our Earth, as I understand it, you could look at the Earth a little bit as, as your own body. So as we understand now, amongst others from acupuncture, we have meridians um, over through our body, which is like an energetic grid work of energies that are very concentrated there. And of course, these lines, they cross, connect. And uh, so they do on the Earth as well. And it's these cross connections where a lot of different ley lines or energetic uh, grid lines come together where there are often these vortices. And you will find that in many of these cases, for instance, the amount of crystals in the ground is very high there as well. And that um, there is a measurable amount of electromagnetism in this area. So, um, or it's around a volcano, it's a place where, where the earth is very flexible, <laughs> moving, breathing, I would almost say. So this particular place in England, where the Thor is, is considered to be the throat chakra. Now, that's another thing I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, nice, the sun is coming through. It's been a really rainy day so far. So I was already happy to find a dry spot. But I'm so happy to be here, so grateful to be here. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, Glastonbury, this whole area, is considered to be um, the throat chakra of the earth. So really, that's another thing about expectations. I personally am not the biggest fan in the world, I must say, of um, labeling the chakra points of our earth as being related to a specific chakra in the body. I think it's nice to know, but it's also good to let go. <laughs> because again, as soon as we, we start telling each other, oh, that is typically the, the um, crown chakra of the world, for instance, Tibet or the Himalayan area, is very much associated with that, then also very often people start to have expectations that are connected to that particular part of your system. So you may go there and think, you know, I really want to be uh, a psychic and I want to allow in more knowledge of the higher dimensional realms, so I'm gonna go to the chakra point that is most connected to that being Tibet, for instance. And Okay, so that's just me. I personally don't really think it works that way. <laughs> the funny thing in my own experience even is that um, even though, of course, it may have effects on you that are typically for um, that energetic uh, frequency of our beings, it may also be completely different. So you may actually think you need information from higher dimensional realms and therefore you, sh you should quote-unquote go to Tibet and visit this particular chakra point. It may also be that um, the system, looking at it holistically, so this is my experience, um, needs more grounding actually in order to allow in more information from the higher dimensional realms because we are one being and visiting any vortice point, vortex point on the earth um, is connected to visiting any of the others in a sense as well although they do have their own unique frequency energy is what I personally experienced but then again so this is what I want to say it's that you can't predict you can't calculate you can't rationally reason how or why a certain thing 
should unfold in a certain direction. So the bottom line really is follow your heart, follow your excitement, go to wherever you feel most drawn to from a joyful, enthusiastic kind of place in yourself, if this at all is something that you feel resonates with you, and then check it out and see what perhaps may come your way. And then this is the last fun thing I want to say about vortices. As we um, visit those often very energetically charged locations in our Earth. So what I understand from my own guide, I channel Arjun of the Yael. Some people are familiar with my work in that and then some are not. It doesn't really matter. What I get from my own uh, higher self and the beings that I work with when I channel is that um, when we look at our planet, um, you could see it like metaphorically speaking you could say it has a skin and then where the grids overlap where the vortices are the skin is thinner and that would be a symbol in this case for the idea of the skin of forgetfulness the game we are playing here on this earth as a human race so you could say whenever you come closer to a vortex um, the skin the veil is thinner so you could choose to synchronize with that remembrance, that awareness that is very easily available for anyone in those places. Um, and then reconnect to the bigger knowing of who you are. So I see them as amplification points, you could say. And um, again, that doesn't have to mean that all of a sudden you, you sleep one night in such an area and you're clairvoyant the next day, <laughs> not at all. Actually, my sensation is that it, they are also cleansing, cleansing areas, cleansing. <laughs> so if you have anything, issues in yourself that you're still working on, or that want to be seen from a different angle, for instance, um, it may very well be that you're in one of those areas and uh, you get into a, an unexpected conflict with a person, or you get sick, or you get really tired, or you get hyperactive. Whatever it is that you feel shifts within you is a message from your own higher self, as I understand it, to your rational self, to your persona self, to allow you to get more insight, insights as to who you really are, as to what wants to still be seen, so that all other chakras within yourself can come into more alignment with your higher self so that you become more of the core being that you truly are and that's how energetic places if that is your chosen permission slip can work for us and it may be expected it may be unexpected like i said before some people get um simply guided by um <laughs> randomly seeming randomly circumstances to visit such a vortex area and they weren't even planning on it so I always feel we get the puzzle piece that we need in any given moment and it may be very mellow very gentle or it may be pretty shaky <laughs> and more profound at least in our experience but it will always be perfect it will always be exactly what you need in any given moment so Thank you, all of you beautiful grid workers, because that's what you are when you visit those places and then you go elsewhere and, you know, you carry around in your own energy system little bits and pieces, traces of these places that you've been. And this is how I look at it. I think, for instance, Stonehenge or Glastonbury are like fountains. I mean, people are drawn in from all over the world and I see them kind of shower in that energy and then they take it with them to wherever they are from uh, or travel to new places and we're all connecting the dots. That is at least how Arjun, my guide, showed me um, this is all unfolding and it's a big part of the awakening in the planet, in the earth, in ourselves because eventually all the vortices, everything we observe, is just a reflection of who we already are and we are traveling around in our own bigger body eventually and whether that is by visiting vortices or by taking big and courageous steps in our job or in our love life or how we live or where we live every single one of these steps is of unspeakable value of every single one of us eventually finding our core selves 
back, you could say, re returning ourselves home <laughs> and each other as we inspire, of course, by being the brightest light that we can possibly be. So, yeah, I recommend if you have any curiosity in you to visit any kind of vortex location on the earth or anything in, in those lines has ever called you in for no apparent rational reason. Check within yourself if there was a moment like that and if you're still enthusiastic about it and maybe surprise yourself and actually go visit it without expectation of the outcome and see what comes for you, what, what happens. If you do or if you ever did make such a trip, I would love to hear your stories and your experiences. You can leave them below here in the video. And if you are up for more multidimensional messages and uh, ET downloads and you name it, then please subscribe to this channel. I thank you so much for being the unique puzzle piece in the whole that you are. I love you so much and I send you all the best throughout the rest of your day.